JP here. This is a story about the first time I met an astronaut. The astronaut was Donald Deke Slayton. Now, Deke Slayton was an astronaut's astronaut. He was one of the original Mercury 7. I grew up in the early days of the space program when being an astronaut meant wearing a silver spacesuit. At the time, there were only three things in the world that mattered. Will Robinson, Major Matt Mason, and the Mercury 7. If you don't know about the first two, look it up. Deke Slayton didn't get to fly a Mercury capsule due to a heart condition, but it cleared up later and he flew to space on the joint U.S.-Soviet Apollo-Soyuz mission. After retiring from NASA, Deke went to work for Space Services Incorporated, one of the early commercial spaceflight companies. On September 9, 1982, they flew their Conestoga rocket to 194 miles, the first privately funded rocket to reach space. That's over 40 years before Elon and SpaceX flew Falcon. At the time, my company, JP Aerospace, was only four years old. We were developing the Eohippus Dawn Horse modular microsatellite. Itself was based on the Explorer 42 Hura satellite. We were running with retired Apollo and moonlighting aerojet engineers and starting to make a name for ourselves. A very small name, but at least we were in the game. You know, I would love to think that our reputation for innovative thinking is what got space services attention. But this was 1981, and the reality was that commercial space was very taboo in the early 80s. And frankly, we were willing to work with them, or anyone. We worked with space services staff on the phone for several months and worked out a proposal to fly the Euhippus satellite on their rocket and then jointly market them both. All was great, and it was until they said they were gonna fly their president out to do an in-person meeting and sign the deal. And that person would be astronaut Deke Slayton. That sounds amazing, right? Actually, it was terrifying. The terrifying bit was that I was only 19 years old at the time. My staff and engineers, of course, knew that, and even our backers knew, but we kind of never told the world at large and we sort of never mentioned that to space services, that I was a teenager. I didn't even own a car. I rode my bike to the office, and space services had asked if I couldn't pick up Deke at the airport. We had a big meeting about this to decide who should go, and we decided there was no other way. I was just going to have to do it and let the chips land where they may. On the appointed day, I borrowed Jeff's car and drove to the airport. I was a nervous wreck. He came riding down the escalator, looking around, and of course I recognized him. So I just walked up and introduced myself. Let me describe Major Donald Kent Slayton. He is tall with a hard, serious face and intimidating as all get out. He just stood there and stared at me for about a hundred years, looking at me with what was in my mind was that, where is your father look that I actually got quite a bit. Then it happened. He smiled, stuck out his hand and said, JP, good to finally meet you. I will remember that moment for the rest of my life. We spent the day going over the details and putting signatures on paper and then parted ways. Along the way, we discovered each other's love of flying and that we both had a missing finger. Okay, an odd thing to bond over. But the point was, he never looked down on me or treated me as if I were a kid. After four years, it was my first good experience in the space industry. Unfortunately, space services was too early in the game, and their private launch services never happened. Even though I was just one of the countless people Deke Slayton met in his long career as a World War II bomber pilot, instructor, test pilot, astronaut, NASA manager, and finally entrepreneur, he had a huge impact on my life. I didn't realize it at the time, 
But Deke gave me an incredibly valuable gift, confidence. 30 years later, I walked into a meeting at the Department of Energy to meet with the deputy director and eight double PhDs, all of whom did not want me there because I had something different to say. I didn't bat an eye at their amateur hour stares and said what I came to say. The nerves of steel wasn't my doing. It was from all those years ago when Donald Kent Slayton, American Mercury 7 astronaut, shook my hand and made me believe. Thank you, Deke. Epilogue. While fact-checking myself for this video, I came across this picture. It's Deke Slayton testing the Allen Hazard moon suit in the Mojave Desert. The suit and the astronaut in it were the model for a toy astronaut in the 1960s, a toy astronaut that inspired a generation to want to be astronauts when they grew up. Major Donald Slayton was Major Matt Mason after all. Please press the subscribe button to keep the videos coming, and thank you for watching my video.